Have you ever heard something that made your spirit jump? Something that inspired and motivated you? A word that dropped in your heart? Maybe you were in a conference, a church meeting, an inspired word from God that made you want to take action. But what happened at the end of the meeting? You left, you felt good, but what did you do with the word? If all the sermons and messages that you've heard have been put to use by you, your life would not remain the same. Things would radically just change optimally in today's video i want to speak about things that would radically change your life welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Uwem Akwan, and if you want to keep listening to this video it will be a pleasure you should not just desire the word of god to feel good but you should see the word of god as a tool to kick your life forward as a tool to move forward in life from where you are hebrews chapter 4 says for we also are having good news proclaimed even as they did this is speaking about the israelites but the word hate did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those who heard. The Israelites heard the word of God, but did not mix it with faith. And due to that, it did nothing to them. They could not possess the promise of God. And in today's world, we are having good news proclaimed to us. We are having messages that inspire us, but it is not profiting us. Why? Because we're not mixing the word with faith. We feel good and that's all right. It makes us happy. It lifts us from depression. That's all right, but it should change our life. It should transform the inner self in us. So these are three things you need to know about faith that will radically change your life to make you live in an optimal level. Number one, faith comes by hearing, but faith works by applying the word heard. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. So you've heard the word, but for faith to work, you have to apply the word. Because James 2.17 says, Faith without works is dead. And what is this works? It is not your self-effort. It is the application of the word you heard that gave you faith. Because as faith came through the word you heard, then the application of that word is the works of that faith. Is the work that is needed or necessary for the faith to work for you. Abraham was told by God to go sacrifice Isaac. That was a difficult task because he's been praying for Isaac for a very long time and waiting Patiently, but Abraham did not complain. Instead, he believed God. He must have believed that God can raise Isaac up from the dead. So he believed God. And the Bible says Abraham believed God and it was accounted for him as righteousness. That was the work of his faith. God spoke to him. He believed and went ahead. You could see when Isaac asked Abraham, this is the wood. Where is the lamb for sacrifice? He said, Jehovah will provide. Jare, the Lord will see to it. And of course, God saw to it and there was a lamb provided. But had it been Abraham waited for God to provide the lamb before he obeyed God, he must have missed out from applying faith in the word God spoke to him. So in your life, it could be God has given you a word. God has told you what to do. But you are waiting for him to show you something else and evidence before you move by his word. That is where you need to apply faith in the word he has given you first. I realized that God has used that experience to save Abraham from idolatry because sometimes he could have idolized the gift that God gave him. But God made him go to a place that he was ready to give up this gift that he waited for. So are there things in your life that are hard for you that if God would say, can you let this go? It could even be a relationship. It could be anything. It could be an attitude. It could be a character trait. It could be your pride and arrogance. And God is saying, let this go. Would you believe him? Would you start living by applying faith? Because all the words that have been spoken that inspire your heart are words that spur faith up in your heart. They kind of put the flame of faith higher. But now you need to ride on the wings of that word that has been provided by doing actions and deeds that commiserate to the world that has been given to you. Number two, faith does not need the full picture. Faith needs an anchor. Sometimes when God speaks to us, we want to receive a full picture. Maybe like, you know, God has a vision and a plan for your life and you're telling God, show me the full vision. The truth is, our life is like puzzle in the hands of God and every pieces of our life, God will bring it together to form the full picture. 
But the full picture can't be in our hands. If it is, we will spoil things before it's time. We will not be able to walk in God's timing. So faith does not need the full picture. This is someone like Joseph. He had a picture of what his future looked like, but the picture of the progress, of the full picture of the progress, he did not know. He found himself as a prisoner. He found himself as a slave. But did that stop him from becoming what God had meant for him to become? No. One thing he was conscious of was his anchor, which was, each time the Bible keep quoting, and the Lord was with Joseph, and the Lord was with Joseph. That is all you need. God called Abraham, leave your country and come with me to the place I will show you. And this is what the Bible says in Hebrews about that. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, and he left not knowing where he was going. Abraham did not have a picture of the land God was leading him to, but he left following God. All God needs from you is to have him as your anchor to be able to fulfill the purpose and the calling he has for your life. The more you walk with him, the more it becomes clearer. The more you walk with him, the more vivid this picture becomes. It could be about you having a desire for a godly relationship, a good marriage, business, career, or whatsoever desire that God has placed in your heart. But to get this, you don't need a full picture. Maybe you're thinking about a relationship and you think the person has to be the perfect person. Everything has to be together. You don't know how God wants to make it happen for you. And all you need is God's presence. And your faith should anchor in God, not in you. Such that you are given to following God's leading. As it leads you, so you follow. Like Abraham. He said, get out of your country. And the Bible says Abraham departed. The word departed used in King James means he followed. He followed God as God led him. Number three, faith does not need to agree with reasoning. God might be calling you to something special and spectacular, but your reasoning is the actual blockade that is stopping you from obeying God. Because God might call you to a dream that is bigger than you, higher than you, way beyond your pay grade and you are telling God how can I do this this is beyond me you only need to participate with him when God called Moses Moses said I am not eloquent I've never been eloquent neither am I right now as I'm speaking to you God said who made man's mouth your shortcomings cannot stop God from using you instead it increases the tendency for him to use you because God loves to use the weak things to confound the wise. You can talk about Peter in Luke chapter 5 where Jesus told him cast the nets to the right side. Master, Peter replied, we've just come back from fishing all night and didn't catch a thing. But if you insist, we'll go out again and let down our nets because of your word. So faith needs an anchor in the word of God. Faith needs not to agree with reasoning. With reasoning, Peter as a fisherman would say, I've tried all my skills. I've employed all I know. But he said, at your word, God, I won't allow my reasoning to stop me from obeying. At your word, I will go for it. So if these words that inspire your heart come to you, that's faith coming. But if your reasoning is trying to stop you to make you think that this cannot happen in your life, that is what is stopping you from breaking out, stopping your breakthrough. And if you apply this today, that your faith does not need reasoning, it will radically change your life in an effective way. Of course, Peter cast the net at the word of Christ to the right side and he caught a net breaking boat sinking load of fishes. What is that thing before you today that you think you cannot get? Because based on your reasoning and the facts around you, you think it's not possible. But with God, nothing shall be impossible. I believe this video has been of value to you. And if it has, give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel. And finally, when the pressure to fulfill God's promise is on you, it might break you. So you don't need to take on the pressure to fulfill God's promise on yourself or on your efforts or on your ability. You need to partner and participate with God through faith and allow him bring his word to pass. You cannot bring God's word to pass. He says, my word comes down like the rain and it has to fulfill the purpose it came to do. So like the rain touches the ground, it has to bring fruitfulness and flourishing to the plants. So is the word of God that when it comes, it must fulfill its purpose. So if God has given you a promise, a word, hold on to that word with faith. Don't allow your reasoning to mess with it. Don't allow the need for having a full picture to stop you from going with that word. And neither should you in any way not put this word to practice. That will radically change your life. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.